Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to turn a chunk of magnolia, a piece of wood, into wine. Well, a wine bottle, that is. So stay tuned, stick around, and let's get this done, okay? Make sure and spin it, make sure we're doing good. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and make this thing round. Okay, folks, so we have a r basic rough round shape on this thing at this point. And what we're going to do now is come right into the end here and we're going to square that off. So I'm going to try to take it all at once because it is not square. So we'll just take some slicing cuts right in there. And then we're going to come in here with a peeling cut. And finish that peeling cut coming right on down here and put us a tenon on that. This wood is not dry by any means. It's been stored outside. It's been down since February when the freeze came through. So it is far from actually being dry. The bottom is actually the biggest part of the bottle. So I want to make sure we don't take that too small. If we're going to get this as close to actual size of the bottle as we can. And if we're off a fraction of an inch here or there, it's not that big a deal. Okay, we're down to wood all the way around there. And let's see how close we are. We're within a sixteenth of an inch, so I'm gonna call that good. We're gonna call that the bottom. And we're gonna be taking measurements off of this bottle as we go. So we're gonna come in five-eighths of an inch. That's going to be our bead. As you look at this bottle, you'll notice this bead down here. That's what I just marked. The largest portion of the bottle is right here. So let's see how far away from that we are. Yeah, we've already come down more than that. So we're going to make the bottle a little bit smaller than what it actually is. So we've got a little bit of ways to go down to get rid of that bark there. Okay, we're going to make another mark right here. This is where we start making our uh, taper down. We'll just take and do some peeling cuts here. And 
Anytime you've got to remove a lot of wood quick, those peeling cuts are uh, they'll do it. But one thing I will say is you have to be careful because you can absolutely remove more wood than you want to remove. And you can do it before you even know you've done it. Gonna do a couple of things here folks gonna let that uh, tool rest down just a little bit gonna bring it in a little bit okay let's take our bottle and put it back up there again we've got our bead here this is the biggest part of the bottle we've got a taper so we've got our taper going right here we need to come on in here and come on down Hey folks, if you like what you're seeing, please go down and subscribe. Ring the bell if you'd like to be notified of when I release new videos. And most of all, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the videos. If you love them, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. If you hate them, give me a comment. Let me know what, I'm doing, what I could do better, okay? Thanks so much. We'll take our 3 8 spindle gouge just kind of round this over. That bead coming up just a little bit too much. Let's, let's knock a little off the top of that. That looks a little more realistic. So we've got the size of our neck now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. And we're going to drill out that neck before we take it down. So what we've got here is an 11 16 spade bit. I can't honestly tell you that a spade bit is the preferred bit to do this with. But I can tell you that it's the only bit that size that I can find in this shop. So we're going to slow the lathe way down. A 
Okay, so we've got that drilled out that deep. So it's going right down here to the neck of the bottle right now. Okay, folks, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this neck of this bottle. I'm going to take a parting tool and go in and get the size of the neck. So let's take a look here. That's going to be... It's going to be right behind this right here. So we've got the size of the neck right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn our lathe back on. We're going to speed it up a little bit. So here we go. And what we're doing is we're just cutting that. Okay. So we know that that's the size of our neck right there. And so what we can do is we can come in with our skew and we know that at this point we need to bring that right down to there. And that's the size of our bottleneck. Let's take a look at that. We'll come back in here. I think we need to bring this down just a little bit here so that our neck's a little bit longer. And for that, we're gonna grab a bowl gouge. Maybe my favorite tool in the shop. Okay, folks, let's continue to take a look at it, compare it. We need to smooth that out a little bit. I will tell you, normally when I'm doing these, I don't go to this much trouble to try to get it just like another bottle. Because honestly, who's going to set it beside a bottle and go, it's supposed to be this one. But I wanted to do this for you guys. Okay, let's take a look at that. We're pretty close. I think we need to come in here just a little bit more still. And we're gonna do that real quick right now. I think we elongated that neck enough then. I'm seeing that same curve. So what we gotta do now is come right in here and finish off the top. Again, we'll just do some peeling cuts to kind of get some of this out of the way. Again, as you're doing that, let's take a look at what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lathe back on so we can mark this. So we still need to come down quite a bit here. Okay, now we're gonna come back in and we're gonna take this down to a, okay. So at this point, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna catch our spindle gouge and we're gonna give ourselves some marks. Okay.
Okay. Okay. And then this is rolled just ever so slightly. Okay, let's see what we've got there, guys. Okay, folks, I'm going to do some sanding on this, and I'll be back when I get the sanding done, and I'll show you what we do from there, okay? Okay, folks, we got this sanded out to uh, 320, looking real good. We're going to go ahead and put a coat of Minwax Antique Oil Finish on it. And we're just going to put this on with it on the lathe here, give it a chance to soak in. This is one of, uh, I won't really call it a secret, because I've told everybody that'll listen, but this is one of my secrets to keep green wood from cracking. You put a good coat of antique oil finish on it, and that pretty much seals the wood. You'll still get some evaporation, but it'll be very, very slow, and it takes a long time. But with it in the house, you're all but going to eliminate cracking. Even woods like crepe myrtle, if you cut down a crepe myrtle and lay it out in the yard, it will split itself. I've always said that that stuff would make good firewood because you wouldn't have to split it. All you got to do is cut it because it dries and splits so bad. But yet I make a lot of crosses out of it and I very rarely have a piece split because I do exactly what I'm doing right now. And as long as that's going to absorb the oil, I'm going to put some more on it. When it quits sucking up the oil, that's when I'll take and part it off the lathe and we'll, uh, we'll finish the bottom. I was really wondering how all those, uh, the knots and limbs that were coming out of there were gonna look. You never really know when you put a piece like that on the lathe, but I think it really is adding some character to this bottle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish applying the oil to this and I'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll go ahead and part this off, okay? Okay, folks, we're going to go ahead and turn the lathe on slow, and we're just going to wipe this oil off anything that's not soaked in. Always be careful when you're using any kind of cloth or rag around the lathe. If I'm going to use cloth, it's going to be a very tiny piece, but even this paper, it may not tear as quick as you might want it to. Okay, folks, there we are. Obviously, that's still wet. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to part this end off. So I'm just going to use my uh, spindle, 3 8 spindle gouge to do that with. And we're going to do just a little bit of a taper cut down into this. That spade bit that we used to drill that out is, it drills an awfully ragged hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this old cheap sandpaper we've got here, been laying around the shop forever. I'm gonna roll a little bit of that up and we're gonna sand the inside of that bottle, okay? Or inside of that uh, bottleneck. Just enough to kind of get the rough stuff out of there. If I had drilled this with a uh, Forstner bit, I probably wouldn't have be having these issues. By the way, this sandpaper here is 100 grit, so it's pretty aggressive. But again, it's, it's some cheap sandpaper. I don't even know where it came from. I think I picked it, picked it up with some other equipment and stuff I bought used. Let's see how that looks. Much, much nicer. So now we're ready to part this bottom off. When you do that, you want to make sure you're coming in at an angle. So we're going to come in like so, basically making a cove up in the bottom of that bottle. And you want to take you some, uh, some clearance cuts here. Because the last thing you want is that parting tool binder. Just want to take one more cut with the skew so that I don't get any tear out close to the edge there. Now 
Now by taking that cut with a skew, I basically eliminate the problem with tear out. Uh, right there next to the edge. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm coming in, I'm positioning my left hand to where I can hold the parting tool with my left hand and feed it in. And I'm holding the bottle with my right hand. And there we go, folks. There's the wooden bottle. There's the wine bottle. Slightly different. I'll give you that. But pretty close. Folks, I think these would be great gifts to give to a host or a hostess that invited you to a New Year's Eve party and you only have a couple of days to do it, but I have faith in you. You guys can knock these out. They're a lot of fun to make. People absolutely love the things. And one of the side benefits of them is they're a nice display for your bottle stoppers if you're doing a show. Have fun. Make you some wine bottles or any kind of bottle. I mean, just have fun with it. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.